and I will restore for you the years that the locusts have eaten. The hopping locust, the stripping locust, the crawling locust, my great army which I sent among you. Many of us have areas in our lives where we need a breakthrough. Maybe you feel like you're just spinning your wheels or that, or no matter what you do, nothing seems to just work out right. While most people have lost one or two crucial stakes in life, few have lost everything. Have you experienced the loss of something you consider precious to you? Whether it's a relationship, health, a job, or something else that you hold dear. Have you lost so much that you feel you can no longer stand up to or measure up with your colleagues again, and as a result you think you should give up on God? We can lose good things through carelessness or sin. Oh, sin. Sin is the most common. You know, here is the great news. God is a God of restoration. God is still in the restoration business. John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus has come to restore everything. Now Job lost everything. He was rich but became poor. Job trusted God and everything was restored back to him. Now Job chapter 42 verse 10 says, After Job had prayed for his friends and the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. Now, God will restore all things for you as well, just as he did for Job. He will restore all things. But before we go further, I want you to understand that there are certain things that will happen when God restores you. Now when God restores you, he does not only restore to you what you lost, but also adds more blessings that will amaze you. He promised health restoration, Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17, But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you are called an outcast, Zion for whom no one cares. He also promised financial restoration, Joel chapter 2 verse 25, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten. God restores destiny. He restores lost dreams. He restores visions. Not only can God wipe away our past, but he can restore and replace what has been destroyed. He can restore it so much that he can put it back into the right place and he can set it back into the right condition. So check out what God says in Joel chapter 2 verse 25. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten. So the locusts had invaded and ruined many years of crops. The field of the farmers were seeming in despair. Now, God's promises are not only to return the land to its original condition, but to also renew what God lost during the wasted years. God promised to not only deliver the people from the plague and famine, but to also give them all that they had during that time. And simply because they chose to come back to the Lord, if you're longing to recover lost years, if you're longing to recover broken relationships, hurt feelings or distance with God, you need to know the God who restores. You need to know that God is equally, equally into the business of restoration. Now, equally important, you also need to understand how he restores. Now, what do lost years look like for us? Lost years or locust years are years that you cannot get back and they come in many varieties. Lost years are fruitless years. A lot of hard work was done in the years and the locusts had eaten them. Now, after everything was destroyed, the people must have thought with all the work we've put in, what do we have to show for it? You might have experienced this pain in the world of business. A failed venture, a bad investment, a misguided policy. And all effort that you put in day by day, month by month, year by year, led to massive disappointment. And you think, what has become of all my time and all my effort? What a pity. But I want you to understand that Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 3 says, it says that the Almighty God shall surely restore all that you've lost. Now, whatever pain you're currently passing through, God's restoration will definitely make you forget them. So how, how often, how often do you wish that you could turn back the hands of time when you can start all over? How often do you ask yourself, how I wish I could turn back the hands of time? How many times do you wish you could just start it all over? Where have you lost or where were you robbed of your most precious asset or anything that was dear and close to you? Whether it's a relationship, your youth, your wealth, your health. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17 says, But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds. And so says the Lord of hosts, 
because you were called an outcast of Zion for whom no one cares. You may have even foolishly thrown it all away, leaving only regret, leaving shame and guilt, and you may be thinking to yourself, yes, I'm forgiven and my past has forgotten by the cleansing blood of Jesus. However, wouldn't it be great if I can get back those years wasted and live them for the glory of the Lord? Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7 says, Instead of your shame, you receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, you receive an inheritance of rejoicing. And so you will inherit a double portion in the land, and you will receive everlasting joy which will be yours. Although the past is irrevocable, although it's irreversible, although it's unchangeable, but God is saying we are a new creation. He can do just that. There is a new beginning for us and it's filled with new chances, new opportunities, new expectations. God will not only wipe away our rotten past, but he will restore and replace the good of what we've lost and what we've destroyed and what, and what has been robbed by the devil. And so God will restore his glory upon you. God will bring restoration through the Holy Spirit, through divine ideas. So keep your eyes and ears open. You can't get ideas anywhere at any time. The Bible tells us of the story of the widow in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1 to 7 who was in debt and the short advice from Elijah which was obeyed by her. When she sought the advice from Elijah and obeyed his instructions without doubt, she was able to clear his debt plus extra to fend for herself and her kids. And so God will restore your marriage. God will restore your broken relationships. God will restore failed businesses. If for generations members of your family have been limited, God will lift you up to the top. You will be discovered and God will connect you with new people who will help you bring your destiny on board. You will soar on wings like eagles. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says so. And you will live long. You will be healed from generational sickness. You will be the head and not the tail. Sadness will be turned to joy. Lack will be turned to abundance. You will be surrounded by your loved ones and my people who support you. And you will look at the land around you and as far as you can see, acres and acres of land, God will give it to you. In Genesis chapter 13 verses 14, God restored the land unto Abraham and so shall it be for you. You just need to have faith and never give up praying and everything that the devil has stolen from your family will be restored to you in the name of Jesus. Now look at the land around you. Look at the land around you. Look at the entire environment around you. We see a picture of such restoration in the New Testament. Now when Jesus healed a man with a withered hand, he said unto the man, stretch forth thy hand. And the man stretched it forth, and it was restored whole, like it was as the other. Now you see, when Jesus restores you, the old wounds can't even be found. Hallelujah. He heals you without a trace. So because of all that the good God has in store for humanity, he will tell them to forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 says so. And now in 2 Kings chapter 6 verses 1 to 7, there's rather an obscure miracle involving the prophet Elisha. He and a group of young prophets were walking and something happened. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. However, as one was cutting down the tree, an iron axe head fell into the water. He cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. This might not seem like a big deal to you, but for the fact that the axe head was borrowed made it an especially painful loss for the young prophet. The Jordan was a muddy and dangerous river, and in the natural, there are very little chances of the axe head being recovered. And not only that, it was made of iron, which was rare and valuable in those days. Now the young prophet could not just go into a store and get a replacement, of course not. So the man of God said, where did it fall? And he showed him the place, and so he cut off a stick and threw it in there, and he made the iron float. Now therefore, he said, pick it up for yourself. And so he reached out his hand and took it. If God could restore a lost accent that meant a lot to the young prophet, what makes you think he would not do the same or even more for you? Cheer up, rise up and brace up, for God is about to restore to you all that you have lost. For he is the same yesterday, today and forever. He's still in the business of restoration. But here are some ways you can turn to God for restoration. Be honest with yourself and God. Freely express your thoughts. Freely express your feelings about the loss that you've suffered. Know that God genuinely cares and won't be offended by any negative thoughts or feelings which you're struggling with. 
confess any bitterness, misdirected anger or self-defeating attitudes or behaviors to God, then ask God to forgive you for those habits and give you his grace to let go. And ask him to help you replace them with faith. Remember that God loves you deeply and unconditionally and that he alone has the wisdom necessary to guide you successfully into the future. So decide to trust him so that no matter what your circumstances are, you don't try to change the past. The past is gone and cannot be changed. However, commit to making choices in the present that will shape a better future for you. Forgive others who have hurt you and forgive yourself for mistakes you've made. This can be a challenging process, but the Holy Ghost will always help you if you ask. Know that forgiveness is absolutely necessary to rid your spirit of poisonous resentment that blocks your intimacy with God. Surround yourself with supportive godly friends. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for specific things that you need such as listening. Also help with tasks that you don't have energy to complete. Ask for advice, ask for prayers, ask for accountability and so much more. And be patient because when God transforms you, it's an intricate process that shouldn't be rushed. Be gentle with yourself and as you move forward in your life, stick with God at his pace. Keep walking alongside him. Don't panic and grab at whatever new opportunities happen to present themselves, but wait for God to give you what is truly best. Now expect and eagerly anticipate a better future. Once you leave this dark season, remind yourself of God's promises to restore you and then take the time to celebrate and thank him wherever you see the evidence of his restorative work in your life. Now when God gives you new dreams, don't be afraid to embrace them. Have the courage to step into those dreams. Have the courage to step into those dreams and trust God to make your dream come true. Now ask God to use your struggles and help other people also. Consider how you might tell others a story of how God is restoring you. Because he still is in the business of restoration. I believe and I pray that God in his infinite mercy will raise you. And as he raises you, do not forget to be a helper also. And as you do so, God bless you.